Welcome, my name is Dr. Robert King. This is a tutorial on Blast Go basic use. Um, what we're first going to do is import some demo sequences and then we'll go through the analysis. So if we load up Blast Go, this is what you should have. Because we bought the Pro license, it should say Blast Go Pro. And if you look at the bottom, it should say Europe, Germany or South Africa because we've linked up with um, the most current version of the Go annotations. So you see it says January uh, 2015 just there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import some sequences. So you could work with nucleotide or protein, um, but because Interpro Scan from Blast to Go needs protein, it's quite often better just to convert the nucleotide to proteins within Blast to Go. So let's just load some sequences. So I'm just going to load in some demo protein sequences to do our analysis. If it was nucleotide, I'd then have to go to convert nucleotide to the longest open reading frame to get the protein sequences if I intended to do interpro scan and other things in here. But let's just go with a traditional example which is just using the protein sequences. So I've got eight sequences. I've just given them names from one to eight. They have a length column here, so how long are your proteins? And um, when we get blast hits, there'll be a description of what it is, uh, the number of hits and the E value. And then again, go annotations are here, enzyme annotations, and interpro scan annotation. Okay, so what we do is we work from left to right along here basically to do our analysis. So first of all, uh, we would do a blast on these eight proteins. So Ignore cloud because we don't have many credits for that. We haven't signed up to Amazon and local blast is something you do from the command line anyway using our system which we've paid for called Decipher. So I'm doing NCBI blast which will remotely connect and do a blast. But if you have a lot of sequences it's better to just do the Decipher from the command line and import that blast analysis in. And I'll show you that just in a second while this is running. Okay, so let's just do a blast. What you need is your email address in here, the blast program you're using because it's protein. I'm going to do a blast P. If we had nucleotide, you could do a blast N. And the database I'm going to leave as NR. You could do Swissprot if you prefer. And again, there's the E value and anything else you want to change. I, I'm keeping that the way it is. Again, there's some more options from blast. I just keep these as default. And this is, is the output file. So you want to save your blast output in case blast go for whatever reason crashes, because then you can load up um, that analysis again. And you don't have to rerun it. Okay, so just save it as something you remember. Press run. And then that will start to run in the progress bar just here. So as you can see, it's not got very far, it's only just started. But eventually that will go all the way to the green and be completed and you'll start to see these columns populated. So while that's running, we can also run an Interpro scan. So run Interpro scan, again email address, tick what analysis you want. You can have all of it if you if you want, but it will take longer. If you just want PFAM domains for whatever reason, then you can just select the PFAM domain um, database. I'm going to keep them all though. Okay, and again you need, rather than a file, you need a folder to keep the output. So I'm just going to keep it in my blast to go files and that will start to run. So I referred at the beginning that if you had a nucleotide sequences. So if you had them again, you can convert to protein and then the name will change and it will say one underscore off and so forth. But if you've already done a blast on the command line using decipher, then you just go to load blast results and use the XML files. Um, you should have used the blast to go parameter file that's available um, on the Biop Resources share. Again, if you're unsure how to use Decipher, you should go see the Decipher tutorial. There's also Interpro Scan here, but Interpro Scan is quite fast. 
from within blaster go so we wouldn't recommend doing interpro scan from the command line because it's actually quicker using this blaster go tool okay so the blast analysis is finished and as you can see it says please proceed now to the mapping and annotation step so after each step it will tell you which one to go on to next really even if you forget but it's it's left to right basically okay so we've done the blast we've done the interpro scan let's do the mapping step okay so this maps the go annotations from your blast hits not your interpro scan go annotations so there might be proteins that have go annotations associated from their protein domains which aren't found within a blast hit but we will merge those in just one moment but let's first run the annotation which is the next step so what this will do is do a series of filtering and add some enzyme codes to our data so as you can see so enzyme codes have been added. Now at this stage you can choose to, if you wish, is recommended practice to merge your Interpro Go to the annotation. So what we're going to do is going to merge those. In the larger data set you might see more of a difference. So in ours all it's done is confirmed those that are already present. So it's not really added anything. Depending on what you want to look at one thing you could do is make some statistics so there's different statistic options here you can look at the most common one is to look at the blast statistics so if we had a top hit species distribution so out of our proteins what species are they coming up as so you could look at this to see if there's any horizontal gene transfer perhaps it might flag up some genes which are coming from something else so in ours because it's fusarium graminarum they're all coming up as pretty much Fusarium or Fusarium graminarum or Fusarium pseudograminarum. Some additional graphs you could do is to make a combined graph. Now this is good to visualize the summary of Go annotations. So if I want to look at all the Go annotations of all the proteins I've got here, I can, or I could, if there's a particular subset that I wanted to look at, I can just select that subset and then do the analysis on that. Blaster Go will only do anything to what you have selected. So you don't want anything analyzed, unselect some of the proteins. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to make a combined graph and we could do it molecular function, cellular component, all, or biological process. Let's go with all. And this will make a graph of all your Go annotations. And what we can do then is to make a level pie chart to visualize those annotations. So let's go with level 3 and look at all those Go annotations as a pie chart and then what we'll do is we'll summarize those in brackets how many Go annotations are present for primary metabolic processes for. So you can try and see if you had a particular cluster of genes if there was um, some Go annotations that were specific to cell wall organization cellular component organization then you know you might start to look at what kind of um, pathways may be involved you can get the text data of this by clicking save as text so you can put that into Excel and create your own bar charts and so forth another useful analysis is to load pathway maps from KEG so what this will do will be it will retrieve the KEG maps from your enzyme codes listed here and then highlight on those maps those enzymes so you can look at a particular pathway and you might see how many of your um, proteins within your blaster go actually show enzyme codes within that pathway so from the keg maps you can see that there's actually an enzyme code here and what you do is you can look at the map and have a bit more look at that So where's right there we are. See, it's highlighted all the pathways within this keg map that have that enzyme. So say we had more enzymes within our protein panel, then more of these would be lit up with different colours showing that we have them within our subset. So I'll give an example, this one should have two enzymes present. So there we go, we've got from this synthesis 
biosynthesis pathway, we've got the first two enzymes there. Again, you know, larger sample, you may see more of these litter 